we've discovered what we do to practice mindfulness from a DBT perspective, it's time to explore how we do it. The how skills are basically intended to provide the framework for how we observe, describe and participate inside of our daily activities. Remember, practicing mindfulness from a DBT perspective is done by incorporating a mindful approach into things that you're already doing, so there's absolutely no need for additional time to complete your practice. The how skills fall into three particular categories of reference. First, taking a non-judgmental stance or what's known as practicing it non-judgmentally. Second, focusing on one thing in the moment or what's known as practicing it one mindfully. And third, doing what works or what's known as practicing it effectively. If we follow this framework for how to complete our daily practice of mindful activities, then we're going to automatically be drawing our attention to the different stories we have about the world, as well as beginning to build our self-awareness in the process too. What can probably be described as a newfound level of self-awareness for most of us is absolutely key to accessing all of the other skills we have available to us through the dialectical behavior therapy model of living the life we want to live. Without self-awareness, we simply react to situations based on the stories we have about what's happening. And these stories are often a reenactment of the past rather than an accurate representation of what's happening right now. That doesn't mean that we have to disregard the story and treat it as complete fabrication. Mindful awareness gives us the ability to dialectically examine the situation that we're in, choosing how to behave in a way that's effective for us, rather than blindly reacting to the story we have in old familiar ways. Before we get into each of the how skills individually, I want to remind you of the importance of following my motto when it comes to all of the skills that I'm trying to teach at The Liberation Place. Practice, practice, practice is key. And when you think you've practiced enough, please practice some more. This is particularly important in the DBT model because we're trying to create new habitual ways of coping with situations that are traditionally overwhelming for what can be an emotionally sensitive system. When we enter a place of emotional overwhelm, we go outside of our emotional threshold into what's commonly known as a state of fight or flight. The part of our brain that's responsible for thinking things through is no longer active. At this point, we automatically fall into the same old ways we've coped in the past. So practicing our new behavioral responses to the point of overlearning them means we won't fall back into old habitual ways, even when we don't have the ability to cognitively process what's going on. Next, let's look at how we do things non-judgmentally. Taking a non-judgmental stance means exactly what it says on the box, not judging something as good or bad, right or wrong, black or white, or any of the other subjective points of view that we can often attach to things. At the same time, it doesn't mean going from a negative judgment about something into a positive judgment about it, as this would still be a judgment, just not a negatively impactful one. Although most of us can often judge not only ourselves, but also other people in both excessively positive terms and excessively negative terms, the positive that we're trying to take is not that we should be more balanced in our judgments, more that judging should, in most circumstances, be removed from the process altogether. This is a very subtle point that I'm trying to make, but an incredibly important one. The problem we create by judging is that, for instance, if we label a person as being worthwhile, we can always switch that label when something happens so that they now become worth less. In dialectical behavior therapy, instead of judging, we try to observe and describe what's happening in a non-judgmental way to remove the emotional impact of our subjective perception that would previously overwhelm our emotional system, sending us into the same old ineffective coping mechanisms. The goal isn't to replace bad with good or to switch worthless for worthwhile or to make any other similar kinds of replacement to our own internal and external vocabulary. As I previously said, if you're good, you can always be bad. If you're worthwhile, you can always be worth less. Taking a rigid perspective on the use of language, like changing a negative judgment into a positive judgment, runs the risk of becoming absolute. This can and will cause problems by hiding the negative consequences of an event. For example, if you become completely absolute on your judgments, in other words, removing the negative to replace with the positive, you could find yourself labeling something like a rotten piece of meat as good instead of bad, which could cause someone to eat it and then get really sick. While this is an extreme example, I often find this is the case when people hear this type of philosophy, removing words like should and but from their language because of the idea that it's bad to use them. We're not trying to change the language of the evaluation, instead we're trying to eliminate evaluations entirely. Next, let's talk about what it means to do things one mindfully. 
Understanding DBT from a mindfulness perspective has to do with the level of self-awareness we bring to our activities. The second DBT how skill is to focus the mind and awareness in the current moment's activity rather than splitting our attention among several activities or between the current activity we're involved in and thinking about something completely different. This is the very essence of the DBT skill known as doing things one mindfully. Obviously, mindfulness is a critical part of developing self-awareness and there's definitely no right or wrong way to practice it. Whether you're experiencing your mindful awareness through yoga or silent meditation or guided meditation apps on your phone or through YouTube, it really doesn't matter as long as you're developing your ability to experience the benefits of building your own self-awareness. Through my education and my own personal practice of daily mindful activities, I try to look at this part of my own journey from my best understanding of a DBT perspective that I possibly can. The original guru of DBT, Marshall Linehan, acknowledges that in today's busy world, it's difficult for many people to find the time to sit in a state of silent meditation and open their mind, not only to what's happening around them, but also to what's happening within. If you're someone who's able to practice mindfulness in this way, fantastic, keep doing it, please don't stop. However, if you're someone like me who struggles to find the time to practice mindfulness in this very effective way, doing activities one mindfully is also an extremely beneficial way to develop our self-awareness without actually interrupting the flow of our day. In dialectical behavior therapy, we practice the art of one mindfulness by building our ability to observe, describe, and participate into our daily activities. Doing the things we're already doing one mindfully without a sense of judgment. In other words, we pick an activity that doesn't require any mental processing, something that you don't really need to use a lot of energy thinking about. For example, I can practice one mindfulness while washing the dishes, cutting the grass, walking the dog, driving my car, or cooking and eating my food. When I participate in any of these activities, I focus my mind on the activity itself, noticing what sensations I'm experiencing through the use of my senses. As I participate in the present moment, I begin to notice what's happening in my thoughts, observing the different parts of my personality that are engaging, trying to take me away from the moment that I'm in. I describe what part of me it is that's engaging in my system, non-judgmentally. And then I bring my attention back to the present moment, focusing my mind back to the activity that I'm participating in. Next, we're gonna take a look at how we do these things effectively. The third high skill, being effective, is aimed at reducing our tendency to be more concerned with being right over what's actually needed in the situation to help us achieve a beneficial outcome. Marsha Linehan states in her Manual for Dialectical Behaviour Therapy Skills Training, effectiveness is the opposite of cutting your nose off to spite your face. And if you think about it, this statement is incredibly accurate. Our inability to let go of being right is the essence of rigidity, and it often stems from our experience of being raised in what I call an invalidating childhood environment. Not being heard, understood, appreciated, supported, or generally loved are all basic childhood needs. Failure to experience these needs being met in a healthy way leads to an excessive desire for these needs to be met as adults, usually at the expense of effective outcomes. Acting effectively is doing what works to achieve our goals. Without the use of this skill, it's difficult to achieve the things that we want to achieve or to reduce our suffering and even to increase our own sense of happiness. Being right to prove a point may feel good at the time, but it's often at the expense of important relationships or achieving an effective outcome in the situation. Effectiveness requires knowing what will and what won't work to achieve your individual goals. If you're anything like I used to be, most of the time I knew what was and what was not an effective thing to do if I felt calm and I was in a space that felt safe. This way my stories weren't active and there was no fear in my system and I was able to think about my options in a clear and helpful way. At other times, however, this was definitely not the case and my ineffective behaviours were a reaction to the fear that was triggered by the story that was in my system. An openness to experimenting, to staying aware of the consequences of what we do, and sufficient humility to learn from our mistakes are essential to achieving effectiveness. All in all, following the DBT how skills provides the framework for how we practice the what skills. And as we discover later in the DBT skills training modules, without the effective practice of mindfulness, rarely will the other skills be available to us when we're emotionally activated. So as I previously stated, find a way to practice, practice and practice these skills. And when you think you've practiced enough, practice them some more.
Guys, if you take a look around my YouTube channel or go through the pages of my website, you're going to find a lot more videos and handouts that expand on this and many other concepts associated with dialectical behavior therapy. If you want to know more, come join our live online conversations that I facilitate every week. I'll drop some links in the description below. And as always, if you like the content of this video, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and smash that like button. Turn on those notifications for all the latest from me and the Liberation Place. I hope this video gave you some insight for how you can change those behaviors that you're trying to change. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon. Take care, be safe and be well.